tried all that. I tried working for licensed plumbers and thought about being a, ma you know, I am a master plumber. I just had to take some of these stupid fucking tests, which the master plumber test has nothing to do with plumbing per se. It has to do with how to run your business and abide by state and federal regulations. <laughs> That's what the master plumber test is about. It's not about your knowledge of how to plumb in a whole building or apartment complex or plumb in a house or how to run a job site and nothing to do with that you know and it watered down the journeyman test so much that you know anybody that can pass the multiple guess what I call a multiple guess or multiple choice test can become a journeyman plumber without any any knowledge of really any knowledge of plumbing other than you know there's a couple formulas I give you do a rolling offset which uh, even if you do the math out in the field it, and you cut the pipe it don't work you just have to figure it out in the field you know you can get close with their formulas but in practical application it don't always you have to make it work you used to have to uh, Solder, solder up three or four solder joints on half inch copper and only give you so many inches of solder. You don't allow a half inch of joint, right, to sweat your solder joints. Well, that's gone. I don't know if those happen more. You used to have to pour a lead joint to show you could, you know, just a regular horizontal lead joint. Uh, pack the oakum in and uh, uh, smelt the lead and get it hot and, and, and pour, even, pour evenly around. You know, press it in with your tool, your caulking tool. That's gone. They don't do that no more. And then, then, of course, the, the final test is, you know, you're plumbing in a miniature house where they put a window in the way of your vent where you have to, you know, you have to do an offset in your vent. it for the practical now you basically just have to show you can rough in and a vent uh, a house a two bathroom house right? nothing to do with your knowledge of, of how to properly uh, a solvent weld PVC or, or how to gauge your how to gauge your uh, crimp tool for PEX piping uh, and there's none of that going on right Some guys will work as a, as a plumber and work a whole subdivision and back in the 80s and 90s, all that one person would do, all that one person would do was sweat copper, right? Run the loops under the slab, do the, do the rough out, right? Get, get, the, get the stub out soldered in, get the manifold soldered in, uh, put a gauge on it, get it ready for air testing first. Sometimes you didn't even air test. Was air test first 60 pounds, 65 pounds, and then you had other people that all they did was was lay the the four and three and two inch inch and a half PVC and did the rough and stack out for for the drain and waste the waste of that. And you know, a whole subdivision can take six months. It used to take six months nine months depending so you know and then you have another crew come in and then after all, all the pretties are done and they all they do is set pictures set faucets set traps set disposals you know set the commodes uh, valves already set they just put the trim on for the tub uh, set the, set the tub spout you know put the shower head in you know a uh, totally different crew does that So not one person in a new subdivision on the plumbing side, from my personal experience, not one person sees every phase of, of what it takes to put plumbing in a, 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 a two or three or four bedroom house, right? And then when like the AC systems are put in, you got guys that are just AC guys and not plumbers running the drains for the condensates 
and running them uphill and every which way to get them to the outside, the overflow drain. And, uh, you know, two years, three years down the road, if the house is built, your uh, primary pan stops up on your condensate and uh, you flood the house because the drain isn't pitched right to take the water out when it overflows. You know? And all that passes inspection. That's why, you know, having a permit in this day and age, having an inspection done in this day and age doesn't mean anything. When, when you're purchasing a house that was built in a subdivision where all the houses look alike, any subdivision built in the last since, not, since uh, probably 1983, 84, any subdivision that was built by anybody, you can't trust the plumbing in it. You can't. And uh, from some, you know, some electrical crap I've seen, you really can't trust the electrical in them too. You know, open up a panel and, and shit wired nutted together all the time. Stuff added for whatever reason after, I don't know what they're doing. But, you know, wire nutted junctions inside the circuit panel behind the panel when you pull the panel, the faceplate of the panel off. You know, you can't do that. Contractor being licensed and bonded or licensed and insured does not guarantee any level of service whatsoever. You know, all it takes to become a contractor in nearly any state in the United States now is money. That's all it takes is a little bit of money, right? Pay the state for your general contractor license, take their silly test, you know, which you can take a four hour course or whatever to to study for the test and tell you what's on the test so you can't you can't fail the test if you pay attention in the four-hour class right and they tell you what's on the test and you take the test and then you give them your thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars or whatever the fuck they want and then you gotta purchase a million dollar liability policy which for me that would be about fifteen hundred dollars a month to purchase a policy that isn't worth the paper it's printed on if, if something catastrophic were to happen from my negligence on, on a job I'm working on, right? Say, heaven forbid, which will never happen, I burn somebody's house down having a torch in the wall. Which, with the way construction methods are going, I, there's no need to have a torch in the house anymore. No need. Don't even have to have a torch in the house, right? Which I'm all for that, right? Because I don't know how many fires I've seen started myself personally by so-called plumbers or, or apartment head maintenance guys that stick a torch in the wall and, and start start a building on fire and, and you lose six units or <laughs> you lose 20 units in, uh, in an hour and a half. Oh God. Because they simply don't bring a fire extinguisher up with them when they go to stick a torch in the wall and don't oh, and try to try to fix a little repair in a, in a hole in a wall that's, you know, literally four inches by four inches square. You, you can't stick a torch in there and not, and not hope not to start the wall on fire. So you gotta open the bitch up, you know, two foot by two foot, or as big as you can go. Two foot by two foot minimum, right? There's a hole you open up, and you're gonna stick a torch in the wall and solder copper fittings in the wall. Two foot by two foot. And then you have a fire extinguisher, and you have a bucket of water there too with a, with, a, with a rag or a towel in it or sponge or anything, right? And if something lights up in that wall, you can sling some water on it real quick, right? Just basic stupid shit that, that because of the way men or even women, I've seen a few women plumbers, but the way they're trained, fire safety is not even, not even discussed at all. If not, it's very barely glanced over. When fire safety should be like, you know, number uno, numero uno, right? Number one, fire safety. And safety in general, right? You don't get up on a ladder without a spotter, right? You don't climb a ladder by yourself. You don't crawl underneath a house by yourself, right? A house that's closed in, right? And you can crawl underneath the house to get to the plumbing. You don't do that by yourself, right? Or at least without, maybe now I got a video camera and I have a cell phone, you know? I might crawl underneath the house just to take a look, but you don't go do work underneath the house. 
You don't go work, do work in an attic, right, without a second person, right? You don't work off a ladder without a second person. You don't work on a roof without a second person, right? Safety first, right? You know, for what little I work for, if you're not going to pay for my second person to help me be safe, then, you know, go find somebody else to do it by themselves, <laughs> right? Safety first, first of all. Oh, and the other thing I was talking about, read, 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 read on the internet. Go buy a, a book at Home Depot or Lowe's in the rack right there when you first walk in the door. You know, if you think you want to lay tile or, or remodel a bathroom or change your cabinets out in your kitchen or whatever, go buy the, the $15, $20 book and read, right? And in that, they show you what's kind of involved, right? Give you a general idea of what's involved. You know, you have to have a lot of tools, a lot of tools. <laughs> tools that I've taken 25 years to collect, you know, by working on different things to successfully pull off a remodel that, that will be magazine quality, right? I can do stuff that's magazine quality. Anything less than that, you might as well just go shop at Home Depot and buy their crappy cabinets and buy their crappy lavatories and buy their glacier bay faucets and, you know, you'll have a $2,000 remodel and you might be able to sell the house. So the bonus is this video, this little DV video, mini DV video camera, it works on a micro SD card, which is a 4 gigabyte card in there, which gives me one hour of video on a, on a four gigabyte card. Um, I tried to buy an eight gigabyte card here locally, but nobody has one. And you get two hours of video on an eight gigabyte card, but the instructions say maximum eight gigabyte at the beginning of the instructions, and you go down a little ways and it says max 16 gigabyte. So I might try to get a 16 gigabyte card to see if this camera will take it. And then I should be able to get the charge says two hours of video charge, but potentially I could go four hours, right, with a 16 gigabyte card of video. So two hours is plenty. And then I'm gonna order a couple more of these and mount a, a permanent one on the bicycle, face forward one on the helmet and maybe one rear facing in case somebody uh, comes up and hits me from behind I can see him you know I don't know if this camera will handle a crash or not and potentially have three camera views on my bicycle because like I was telling my friend earlier that as a bicyclist if I don't already have an automobile policy I can't get a bicyclist policy to protect me if I get hit by an underinsured or uninsured motorist, right? Can't get one. For some states you can, but Louisiana is not one of them. Or if I have a homeowner's policy, which I don't, or if I have a renter's policy, it's possible to cover damage or theft of the bicycle. If I have a renter's policy on the contents of my home, but still I can't get a policy to protect me if I get biffed out there um, on the government trying to go a couple blocks down and get in the hood if I get hit by somebody that's not insured or underinsured. Okay. Well, if I had a homeowner's policy if I owned a home or if I had an automobile policy there's you can get riders to protect you as a person on a bicycle, I guess. I guess, but you have to have the automobile policy first. And to me, that's not fair. That's, you know, eventually the insurance in industry will catch on and uh, and realize there's a whole market out there. But like, you know, a lot of the kids that go to LSU here, they're already covered under their parents' health policy for accidental whatever on a bicycle, right? And they're covered, you know, many times are, as an extension under the homeowner's policy for the contents of their dorm room and their bicycle, right, if it gets stolen. So, you know, 
limited you know, at this point it may be a limited market for people that don't like me that I don't want a car anymore I don't want a motorcycle anymore I want my bicycle and then I found two companies that make mo motors for motorized bicycles 50 cc's and under American made motors now for about 350 bucks get one of those and then I don't have the, the burden of uh, having a driver's license and then uh, insurance and then a title fee and then a, a tag fee to get the little registration sticker on the plate uh, uh, and the, uh, every four year uh, driver's license fee all them fees right tax when you buy the car or motorcycle right you gotta pay sales tax on it when you buy the vehicle and you know be thankful you don't live in Virginia where they, they compound the value of the car uh, every year for a sales tax in the state of Virginia and their roads are horrible just deplorable their roads will beat you to death state highways interstates don't matter Virginia you're they beat you to death so well, my brother Anthony lived there in uh, Chantilly Virginia having a Toyota Camry or yeah it's a Toyota Camry four-door was killing them in taxes every year. Like I don't know what it was. It's over a thousand dollars a year in taxes. Right, paid the state of Virginia on the value of your vehicle, prorated every year. <laughs> Fuck that. Well, because Virginia is a, a, a commonwealth, right? Which means some they can do some fucked up shit. They can tax you more without res representation than the uh, another entity that's known as a state. I guess. Alright, well we'll try that for now. And uh, thank you for watching as always and uh, hope to meet you soon. You know, I'm um, love and peace and I'm not here to cause trouble. I'm here just to tell the truth. That's it. Tell the truth. You got nothing to hide. You know, I'm an artist. I'm a musician. I'm a plumber. I play the drums. Uh, my drums are all natural metal, you know, found items. I don't have a Ludwig drum or a Slingerland drum or a pearl cymbal. Um, you know, and I try to create, and I, I take all my cigarette packs and and uh, what, what's known as ephemera, and I create sculptures out of them. You know, I do that. You know, so. I help people when I can, and I just want to be left alone to create, to make music, to make videos, to, you know, to what, what do they say? I just want to live in uh, the pursuit of happiness, right? Happiness. That's all I want. I am pursuing happiness. And I haven't gotten there yet. I'm trying to get there. Um, but happiness, right? It's guaranteed under the Constitution of the United States of America. Peace, liberty, happiness, right? That's all. Try to reduce my encumbrances and I get attacked by the police, right? Try to live a simpler life, right? And I'm treated as a criminal, right? Because I got long hair and a long beard, right? Want to call me Jesus for whatever reason. Hey Zeus, here I, here I am. Drink, drinking a, a, a tasty cold beverage. Hey Zeus. Alright, thank you and uh, have a wonderful day.